Hey, it's Adam with Tech Dive. Today we're gonna to be talking about what you need for a video editing computer. The kinds of parts you're looking for and the kind of money you're expected to throw at it. Why don't you just buy a Mac? Any other dumb questions? Hello and welcome to Tech Dive. Today we're going to be talking about what makes a video editing computer a video editing computer and what makes it different than a gaming computer. We're going to talk about the components to focus on. We're going to suggest different kinds of parts for your build. And we're also going to suggest build guides and things like that if you're looking for more information to go from here. I have here a 4K editing computer and I'm going to talk about the price. I'm going to talk about what it took to build it and I'm going to talk about parts that you can use to copy this build or to get other builds and we're also going to take a look at a benchmark. We're also going to take a look at a few different benchmarks actually so you'll be able to see what this computer is capable of doing and what that price point is going to do for you. So first, let's talk about what you need from your CPU though. You do need at least a mid-level CPU. To get a weak editing computer, you're gonna go with like maybe an i5 or a Ryzen 3, but you're really looking for something that beats the four core mark. If it's got more than four cores, four threads, you're gonna have a better chance of having a better editing experience because you just need a lot of threads when it comes to editing. Doing a lot of raw data grinding and that raw data grinding is better done when you have more tools in your processor. I highly recommend the Ryzen 1600. It's so good, it's six cores, 12 threads, and I've done 4K editing on a Ryzen 1400 of four cores, eight threads, and that was okay, but that's kind of the point where I was like, this isn't quite good enough for 4K editing. I just had some issues when I was doing 4K editing on it, but when I started doing 4K editing on the 1600, that extra two cores and four threads is a big difference. I noticed a lot more responsiveness with my editing software as soon as I upgraded that CPU. The next most important part is your GPU. Now, 10 years ago, this wasn't as big of a concern, but more and more and more editors are using CUDA cores. Now, this is where I'm gonna talk about my editor. I use Vegas Pro and Movie Studios. I'm an affiliate with them, and if you buy it through my affiliates link, that actually helps out our channel. I highly recommend them as an editing software. They're so fast and easy to use. Whatever editing software you're using, whether it's Vegas, Premiere, Resolve, or Avid, all of them nowadays use CUDA cores. When you hear CUDA, you need to think your GPU. Your GPU is this big long piece right here. Your GPU or your graphical processing unit or your video card, all of those, you can use all of those words interchangeably. Your GPU is something that is highly necessary nowadays. More and more they're throwing more work to the GPU. It's not as important as your CPU yet, but it's getting there. And so in the past, you would say you just needed a mid-level GPU. I'm gonna argue that you need a better GPU now. Remember though, you're not gaming with this. If you want to build something that can game and video edit, we'll talk about that. But to just video edit, you don't need to worry about frame rates in gaming. That's what a lot of people talk about when they talk about video cards. You need to worry about the ability of raw throughput. And so you can actually get that pretty cheap with the AMD side of things. You can get with a 580 or an RX 480 or an RX 470, you can get a very cheap but very powerful video card for the money. Uh, a lot of people use it for mining, Bitcoin mining. A similar kind of computation is needed when you're doing uh, video. So for AMD, I would recommend an RX 470, an RX 480, or an RX 580, or an RX 570. Those four cards hit kind of at a strong price point. Another note, I will say that the RX 560 is something that I have edited with as well, and it's definitely a stronger card for editing than it is for gaming. Those kinds of cards give you a lot of raw video editing power for a cheap amount of money. Why not NVIDIA? Well, you can totally get NVIDIA. NVIDIA makes fantastic cards, very, very good cards. And in fact, NVIDIA has very good drivers. And a lot of people are making their softwares to utilize NVIDIA drivers first because they are the more common video cards since they're better for gaming. But that's exactly why I'm not necessarily recommending them first. They have a bigger price point for their gaming because since they are a gaming card, 
that's what they're optimized to do. They're optimized, the newest ones are optimized for ray tracing, they're optimized for frame rates, they're optimized for things that gamers are looking for. Now that doesn't mean they're not gonna be powerful and ready to handle your video editing problems. What that means is that they're going to be price point for a different audience than video editors. So if you are gonna go with the gaming and video editing build, uh, Nvidia is definitely a great way to go. A GTX 1050 is the lowest I would go for a video editing computer, and you should really probably aim for a GTX 1060. Now these things, like I said, they're more optimized for gaming, so the price tag is gonna be comparably higher. Next is RAM. So a lot of people think that your RAM in your computer is eight gigs is the sweet spot. And for gaming and just general work, that is true. You can have a Windows running computer at four gigs of RAM that works great for running Windows. And at eight gigs of RAM, you have a fantastic gaming computer. It's the sweet spot for gaming. Linus Tech Tips always says you need 16 gigs of RAM. That's because you forget when you're rich how much that price point matters but eight gigs is decent for gaming and stuff like that. But for video editing, I would say eight gigs is the minimum. You don't need to be doing 4K video editing with less than eight gigs of RAM. You'll notice a major improvement when you have 16 gigs of RAM on your computer. 16 gigs is the sweet spot for 4K video editing, so I would definitely get 16 gigs of RAM. Don't worry too much about the speed and the cast latency. That's not a big concern for you as a person who's just trying to build a video editing computer. You can obviously get faster RAM is better, but just any DDR4 RAM is so fast nowadays that you're going to have the results you're looking for. Again, faster RAM is better, but faster RAM isn't where I would put my first concern. So if you're worried about shaving off a few bucks, don't worry, DDR4 RAM is plenty fast. So as long as you're getting a good solid speed, I'll recommend some below. You're gonna have some good RAM. You need to worry about when you're building a video editing computer is storage. Now, your operating system and your editor are constantly accessing files when they're using it, especially your web browser and things like that. And you as a video editor are using web browsers. You are using an operating system like Windows and you are using uh, a, a just accessing files. So faster access to those files tends to be better. But you also need a ton of storage because 4K files aren't small. And so since these 4K files aren't small, they're something that you need a lot of space to put them in. And so what's not cheap is fast, ultra fast storage that's also big. Here's the best way to do it. Get an NVMe or an SSD. My NVMe drive is actually kind of underneath my graphics card here so it's difficult for you to see but it's very small and they're actually surprisingly affordable and it's extremely quick it is noticeably quicker when you have a true nvme card it is noticeably quicker than just an ssd but an ssd is still just a fantastic improvement over running an operating system on a platter drive so don't get a platter drive for your operating system get at least two drives when you get two drives you can get a three terabyte two terabyte, one terabyte, whatever kind of video storage you need, you can get that in extra platter drives and easily throw them in your computer and just have your raw program storage and stuff there. But getting a 240 gig, 500 gig SSD to run your operating system and a lot of your base editors and stuff on there will drastically increase your workflow. So that's what I want you to think about. It's not just about how much room you have on your computer, but it's how fast you can access it. There's two good improvements to this. One, your boot time will be better. When you turn your computer on first thing in the morning, and when you turn your editors on, they will load faster, and you will just notice more time in your day, because you're just not waiting on dumb things to load all the time. Your web browser will be near instantaneously loaded when you have a computer like this. So that is something to definitely consider. But also, when you have a platter drive that's not running your operating system, your platter drive actually becomes effective again, because platter drives aren't good at random read and writes, but they are good at sequential read and writes. And they can very easily deliver your video footage at a very fast rate over a SATA cable. 
Using a platter drive to hold your video files is more than fast enough to hand your giant video files over to your operating system and over to your video editor as long as you're not trying to run your operating system and video editor on the same drive. With 4K files, having something that can quickly move those big files and store a lot of them in one place is very helpful. I wouldn't forget backup solutions. In an ideal world, I would have two platter drives in a RAID 0 where everything is mirrored and that would give me double the read speed as well. So that's something to consider if you're able to mark up on what you're doing, but it's not something that's super important. As long as your most critical files are backed up in more than one space, then you should be good. You can do that with cloud drives or an external drive, but just make sure you think about backups as well. So I think that's where a lot of people stop when they talk about building an editing computer, but there's a couple more things I want to mention. Don't skimp on the other parts. There's three things to think about. One, your power supply is running the juice to all these expensive parts. Getting the cheapest, cheapest, cheapest power supply is kind of like putting a time bomb in your computer. Something that's good, that's reasonably priced but good, is an EVGA 80 plus bronze 500 watt power supply. As long as you're not running an excessively high wattage system, 500 watts is usually a very safe buy and an EVGA 500 watt power supply that's 80 plus bronze is going to be a solid power supply. Why do I trust it? Well, there's two reasons. EVGA and, and there's other good brands as well. I'll list them. EVGA is what I have in this one. It's just I've seen it work well over a long period of time. I was in IT for five years and the power supplies we had fail the least all said EVGA on the side. That doesn't mean there aren't other good power supply brands. That's just the one I would like to recommend. Now the 80 plus bronze, I have a video about this. The 80 plus bronze is its efficiency. Now it's good to have an efficient power supply because that means you're wasting less electricity. However, when it's talking about efficiency, something that's more efficient tends to break less. This is not, the rating is not its reliability. This is not when it's something bronze, gold, silver, that's not a reliability rating. However, if you have something that has a high efficiency, I wouldn't be surprised to see it have a higher reliability. That means there's more detail put into the testing and parts in that power supply. So I always go with at least a bronze rated power supply. Another thing that I think a lot of people don't consider when they're thinking about a video editing computer is the motherboard. Now, you're probably, if you're just looking to video edit it, you might not be an overclocker, right? So if you're not someone who's overclocking or just PC enthusiast or gaming into something, you think, oh, I'll just get a cheap motherboard and I'll connect all the pieces. That's okay, but you want to consider putting a little bit of money into your board. So what I have is an MSI Bazooka, and the MSI Bazooka is a relatively good priced board, but it's got good power delivery, it's got good cooling on the board, things that I think will make the board last longer. So it's a good price to performance kind of motherboard. So it's not that I'm suggesting that you shouldn't get a cheaper motherboard, but what I am suggesting is that you don't need to get the cheapest motherboard. If it's a Ryzen chip, you need a Ryzen motherboard. And if it's an Intel chip, you need an Intel motherboard. More information about that in the links below. But having a motherboard that doesn't skimp on the small things means you're going to have a computer just like your power supply. You're going to have a computer that's going to last longer and be more reliable. And when you have an investment of this size, it doesn't make sense just to get the cheapest thing, which could actually influence the killing of your other parts if it dies violently. The last thing I would like to note is the cooling of your computer. Now, as long as you have something that will cool reasonably, you'll be okay. Everything will run up to spec and you'll have a strong computer. So cooling isn't my first concern when you're worried just about video editing. If you're into overclocking or other PC enthusiast kind of things, then cooling is definitely more of a concern. So I would say the weakness to this case is it's airflow. It's really only got one couple of places where the air can come in and out and then it's got its own airflow for the power supply and that's very weak and one of the things that does is it makes my computer run a bit louder. The fans have to run a bit stronger to push the air through. Do I have performance issues? No, because I'm not doing a lot of major overclocking right now. Uh, not for this video at least. Now, what does matter, think about this. If you are recording your voiceovers to this computer or if you're doing recording in the same room as the computer, your fans do matter. So getting a computer that is water-cooled or getting a computer that is high airflow and silent fans 
is something of a concern. So I'll have links below with suggestions for that. Steven does do the same kind of thing where he overclocks and records next to his computer. So I'll be suggesting some of his Arctic coolers there. For my computer, one of the things I wish I had done is built a cooler computer because I do my voiceovers to this computer in this room. And so one thing I'm constantly fighting is this computer's fans. I'm fighting its fans right now with my microphone being right here and the fans are currently running. So that is something to keep in mind. If you're just an editor and you're never filming in the same room as your computer, not as big of a deal. So getting a cheaper case, as long as it's functional and will run to spec is good. I use a Sony FDR-AX100 for my recording. It records at 4K, 60 megabits per second using an XAVC-S codec. And I recorded at 29.97 frames per second and I rendered it back to the exact same profile and it took 5 minutes and 23 seconds using the CPU. Next I took the same Sony codec and I rendered it to a YouTube friendly codec, an MP4 AVC, and that compression took 2 minutes and 48 seconds using the CPU. Now using the graphics accelerated rendering it only took 1 minute and 5 seconds to compress the 4K video to an MP4 AVC. So there you go, those are three benchmarks of common renders that you'll be doing with 4K video. And it's all a very feasible amount of time. I've had a very, very good experience using this computer as a work computer. So my exact build edits 4K great, and since I've used all of these parts recently, I'm going to suggest this first, and then other suggestions as addendums. So I have a Ryzen 1600 with six cores and 12 threads. I have an RX 480 with eight gigs of VRAM. Now you don't need the eight gigs of VRAM. I also do VR on this computer, which is why I wanted the eight gigs of VRAM. But four gigs of VRAM is plenty for a video editor. Also, I have an EVGA 80 plus bronze power supply. That power supply is a good quality 500 watt power supply that I think is going to last a while in the system but not break the bank. I have a platter drive and I also have an NVMe drive to separate the operating system from my large video files. And then I have more speed when it comes to accessing both. Also I have 16 gigs of RAM. The RAM is just DDR4 RAM compatible with this motherboard and processor and I wasn't too concerned about speed. I'll show the cast latencies and megahertz below. The motherboard is an MSI Bazooka with a B450 chipset for Ryzen and that is definitely a motherboard I recommend. It's got a very strong UEFI for any kind of custom settings you're working with and it's also just a good quality motherboard with good cooling and power delivery, something that should help your system last a long time. The case is just one of Cooler Master's generic low-end cases. It's actually one of the least cool cases from Cooler Master. It's very sleek. I removed the front panel to this case, but it's usually got a sleek looking tinted plexiglass cover and it's also got the flat black finish to everything else. And that is a nice professional looking case that's not too expensive. However, for cooling, I would not recommend this case. So I'll have some other cases recommended as well if you're looking for something that is a cooler but maybe slightly more expensive case. So those are my thoughts when it comes to building a video editing computer. These are generic thoughts that can help you think about the parts you're buying better. I have exact part suggestions below whether you want an older and cheaper models or some of the newest and latest models and whether you want Intel or Nvidia I will have all of that in the description. If you buy it through our affiliates links that helps us out a lot. Like if this video helped you out, subscribe if you're looking for more videos like this one. Thanks for watching, I'll see you next time.